Hey guys, Frontwoods Farmer, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're just doing a short episode on how to change your hot water tank heating elements. There's two on this case, it's a 50 gallon tank. Uh, in your electric water heater, they may be the same in gas, I don't know. I know it's another kind of like a boring video, it's not farmer, farming related, but it is do-yourself related. So if you've been uh, part of the channel for a while, just hang tight, we're getting to the better videos. But there's a lot of like, you know, kids without dads, single moms out there, single dads, uh, elderly, and this can help a lot of people. So real quick, I'm gonna show you guys how to change this element. It's something that I gotta do after work, and it is part of farming and having a farm and a house and all that. So it goes together so yeah and also if you're not subscribed to the channel and you like what you see today just hit the subscribe button but don't hit it unless you're going to hit that bell notification the like button because without the bell notification you're not going to see all my new videos so let's get started okay so first thing you want to do with anything electrical is you want to shut your breaker off to the hot water tank okay which our, our case it was already off so that tells me that element, it's it's a U. It's probably broken in the water tank and that's why I tripped this breaker. See, that was already off. So that's 220 volt electric. That's enough to be fatal or cause serious injury. So always make sure that your breaker's off and test it with an electrical circuit tester to make sure that that's actually the breaker for that water tank. In our home, we I do know that that is the breaker. All right, so normal normal circumstances, you would hook a hose onto this hose bib down here, open this valve and drain the water tank. Me, I gotta make a real messy job because uh, what has happened to me in the past because of our calcium buildup, if you're in a well, that's what could happen. You get all this calcium buildup in here and all this white particles and it'll actually clog this and get that stuck open and you'll have to you'll have to get a new water tank so i tend to do it messy i take the top one out it flies out i catch it with buckets i dump it down my floor drain and i have a mess and i clean it up so anyway number one again make sure your power is off so our power is off and also under a normal circumstance when you're changing these not that many Circumstances are normal if you're doing this, but you know what I mean. The insulation on top of your water tank that you've seen on mine, that foam stuff, it belongs in the back here, like right here. But we've been changing ours so much because we have a well. We need a filtration system, which I don't I, I don't have time to hook up right now. It's been just deteriorating this insulation. That lets keeps the heat in your water tank. So know that you should put the insulation back all the time. Always make sure the back of your hand of the power is off. And these screws, the way this hooks up is universal. I believe you can get channel locks or whatever you can really fit in here. But I believe that is an inch and a quarter or inch and a half socket. Okay, so I did find my socket that I use. Normally, I think I got one that's a hair bigger. This is an inch and a half. If you just tweak it a little and turn the ratchet, an inch and a half will work. I'll show you what I mean. This is an old element here. So basically, it'll just get you a grip kind of crooked. So you're gonna always wanna start them by hand straight first. But this is at you, and I have a feeling that one of these elements tripping that breaker, this rotted off. So this is an old element, but I think it was a good element. Here's your new element here. What you really want to uh, look at is up on top of your old element, and it'll say the name, but it'll say like your voltage and everything. Let's see if you can see that, 240, 4,500 watt. That's what you're looking for, 4,500 watt, 240 on a new package. So now that we got all that out of the way, we got our wires off and we have our power off. We're gonna take the first element out. Um, standard threads on my tank. Oh, there we go. What's gonna happen? Oh, you also wanna shut off your hot water. You don't shut your hot water off, it'll drain the whole house. Okay, and I have another shut off. Let me get my other shut off off. That's two offs. Okay. Did, did, 
Did it, did it. I have another one. There it is, my quarter turn though. Okay, now that's off. Okay. This is the tricky part. And again, this is not the way you do this. It's the way we do it. It's the way we do it because I have to do it so much because of the well system. This is one of those things that always get neglected. Yeah, I'm gonna let some pressure off the hot water here. It's already dripping down there. And just got to go like that. And that's it. So this top one, as I was assuming, really isn't too bad, but you can see that calcium buildup, that's that white buildup from the well. That's what eats out these elements and destroys our water tanks. Okay, I'm going to keep emptying this in the floor drain. We'll take out number two. I don't need to show you that. It's the same as number one. I'm going to just show you the installation process. So this is the removal. I'm going to show you the installation. Okay, so I got that bottom element out and it did not look good. So we're going to replace our top one now. The bottom one replaces the same way. So if you're like, well, front one's former. I don't know how to replace the bottom one. Yeah, yeah you do if you watch this. So you saw the uninstall now you're going to watch the installation so remove it carefully i cut it with scissors out of the package you don't want to damage any of this as far as i know these are universal but you want to check with your water tank manufacturer and make sure there's not a positive or ground i loosen up my element the screws you don't want them to fall out but just loosen them up enough to get these wires in there now if you can see you're going to want to put them on that back side See, the back side, it's like more contact and that's gonna screw down and smush the wire. You want no Teflon on these. They already have a rubber gasket, call it an O-ring, but it is a gasket. Some may have an O-ring. You wanna make sure these are kind of going in straight. The best way to do that is with a socket. But sometimes we'll start real nice like that. Remember, during this whole installation process, the power's off. You don't ever want to turn on the power. And at the end, if you have water on the floor, you want to make sure you dry it all up, dry out these little compartments, all the moisture, because that current could electrocute you. So you want to, that's the biggest thing to worry about this. Other than that, it's real easy. You just tighten her up. Now there's probably a foot pound spec to this, but what I do, I run it until it stops, no, no pressure on there, and I just go about a quarter turn. You don't want to, that's all, just enough for it to not leak. If it leaks, you tighten it a little more, but it shouldn't leak. Make, inspect all your wires, make sure there's no holes in your wires to where it's going to spark and, and catch fire to the insula, in, insulation or anything. I'm just going to want to fish these through here real nice. So, this one I think will go nice on the bottom. We can bend these around a little. I do not recommend doing this unless you're a professional. Which means hire an electrician, I'm not responsible for anything. But you get the picture. So you're on your own if you attempt it yourself. But it's not hard to do, it's easy to do. Okay. That's nice and tight. You don't want to strip those screws out. Letting this one around where you need it. Once you get her in there and started, you can always put it back, push her back in there. Okay. Same thing with these. Tighten them up. You don't want them coming loose. You don't want this wire touching anything metal or this wire here. You don't want them touching nothing metal. I try to make them not contact even the plastic because any kind of rubbing and vibration can cut those. Now again, you get yourself a nice clean rag. It's dry. And you want that nice and dry in there everywhere. Dry everything you can. Okay? 
We'll wipe the whole tank, we'll wipe the floor dry when we're done. We leave our insula insulation out. You didn't get to see the removal. It's pretty self-explanatory. You put this plastic doohickey in here as it was removed. They don't always fit the new elements perfect. This is just another shield. So it can even be in there loosely. You want to put it back the way you found it. For some reason mine's not going on the way I found it. I agree about there. And there is where I found mine. Put this insulation in there so we don't lose too much heat. Make sure the back of your panels are dry too. And you're going to want to line up your screw holes. Like so. Very easy. Same thing with these, it's just a cover. That's it. And that's how you install a uh, hot water heater. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn our water on and check the leak. Now the packing nut is leaking on our nut on our hot water valves leaking. We're gonna have to try to tighten that up. If not, you can take these off and get these rebuilt. This nut here, but you're gonna want a good shut off to the house. You can hear it feeling, there's no leaks. We should have done that with the panels off. So after I clean up this big, huge, nasty calcium buildup, that's what that brown stuff is. It's all calcium from the tank, from the well system. Once that's done, I'm gonna throw my breaker on and we're gonna have hot water. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel and hit that like button.